You are listening to Charting Wealth's weekly review and forecast for the week beginning Monday the 2nd of May 2016. We always start with IYY, which is a total market index fund. It gives us a view of the total market. And then we go to the S&P 500. We then go to the NASDAQ 100 and gold. Then we'll look over what moved the market this last week news-wise and what may be moving it in the coming week. This is the only time we look at this once a week view is the only time we look at the weekly charts and then we'll sort of go day by day as to how the week progressed in each of those three indexes and gold. First, let's jump into IYY. That is the total market. Where are we? Well, we had a 11 weeks, 10 weeks actually of up movement. This 11th week is our first week of a red open box down candle. It's almost a hammer. It's a spinning top, lots of indecision. It is a red open box. We've literally had strong green open boxes moving the market up for the 10 prior weeks, starting on the 19th of February after a huge drop in the market at the beginning of the year, from the beginning of the year until about the 19th of February, the week ending then, our first up week after the beginning of the year, and then the market sprang up for the following 10 weeks. This 11th week is the big question mark. We don't have a crossover going down. Our derivative oscillator has been losing energy since the 1st of April, where it really hit its peak. Now, the market's continued to go up. Derivative oscillators lost its energy, and we see a kinking over of the MACD moving toward the signal line, but not close at this point. But again, caution, caution, my friends. Now, let's look at the daily chart. What do we see there? Well, the daily chart crossed over going down back at the beginning of the week on the 25th. The derivative oscillator finally switched over on the 28th. The market really slid sideways and then started dropping off the deep end on Thursday. And then the big drop on Friday the 29th. Now, that's the total market. Let's now go to the S&P 500. For the record, IYY down 0.52% for Friday. S&P 500 down 0.54%. Looks very similar, the S&P 500 does, to the total market. Again, it's that 11th week where the problems come in. If we look at our daily chart, we can see that there was a crossover on the 25th. Again, very similar to the total market. Derivative oscillator crossed over and then heated up substantially as the market started taking its real dips on Thursday, the 28th of April and Friday, the 29th. So again, caution, caution, great caution after all these weeks of lots of up movement as we move into the new week. And we'll talk about some of the news that came out and how that might have contributed to some of this. What's been holding this market up? Not much anything but free money, I would argue. But again, we don't really care one way or the other when it comes to the charts. You can have a every reason for the market to go up, but the charts show you it's not going to. We've seen the market continue to go up for no reason, and hopefully you've been making successful virtual trades off of it. We've sure been calling them for you. Now, let and again, we're not a stock calling service. We do not give advice on how to trade in the market. We're all about reading the charts, practicing virtual trades, and then once you get good enough, you make your own decisions. So now let's quickly go. We're going to go back to our weekly chart. We're going to go take a look at the Qs. What is the Qs? That's the NASDAQ 100. It started going up back on the 19th, as we saw with the rest of the markets when they turned around, crossed over going up on the weekly chart back on the 11th, continued to move up. Now it, it showed signs of weakness, much, much more weakness earlier. It showed the, the NASDAQ 100, the technology stocks, back on the week ending Friday the 22nd of April, and then a huge down week for the NASDAQ 100 for the week ending Friday the 29th. We don't have a crossover going down yet, but it sure looks like one is coming. We saw the derivative oscillator peak out on the week ending the 15th of April, and then has been two more down weeks since then. Now, let's look at our daily chart to see 
what we actually saw going on throughout the course of the week. The Q's crossed over going down all the way back on the 19th of April, way back to Tuesday before last. The week opened on the 25th after a big down day the prior Friday, the 22nd. And then we saw the 25th, a down day, a little bit of up day on the 26th, but then 27th, 28th, 29th, big down days. So the NASDAQ has been rolling over hard going down since all the way back on the 22nd of April. Still don't have a crossover going down on the big weekly yet, but it sure looks like it's coming. The NASDAQ was down for the day on Friday, 0.53%. So all three of our indexes right there together at just a little over half a percent down. Now back, lastly, to the weekly chart, we're going to look at gold. Gold up strong on Friday, 1.95%, almost 2%. Gold's been in a confirmed up move on our chart since the 8th of January. As the market's been puttering along, going down, Gold leveled out around the 11th of March and then did not a whole lot more than really move sideways. Moved down a little bit and then has recovered. It actually closed higher than it closed way back on the week ending the 11th of March. So gold has started to, to move again. We saw it getting close to crossing over, going down. Derivative oscillator went into the red last week, the week ending the 22nd of April, and then popped back up strong. Now, when we look at that candle for the week, we can see there was a, lot, a huge wick on top. So the bears were able to keep gold from going too high. The bulls were quite exuberant in it nonetheless ended Friday up almost 2%. If we look at what happened throughout the course of the week on the daily chart, we see the daily crossed over on the 27th, well, the morning, actually the 28th, that crossed over going up, saw positive up movement on the 27th, derivative oscillator rotated over also, and gold blew out the Bollinger Bands, the volatility bands on the daily chart, way, way up, just zoomed. So what does that tell you? Well, the markets are sucking wind and gold's doing what it's supposed to do. As far as the price movement shows, it's being a safe haven. It's being somewhere the money looks to go to. Now, let's talk about what we saw happen over the course of the last week. The Fed left the rates unchanged. Now, they noted a couple of things. They noted slowing growth, and they also downgraded global concerns. We saw the Bank of Japan, they decided not to boost monetary stimulus, and of course the yen soared, and the U.S. This is something I heard some other pundits talking about. We saw weak Q1 growth in GDP. Now, that's first quarter growth in gross domestic product. I know we use a lot of acronyms, and I, I try not to just use them all the time to explain it to folks that are listening for the first time or can't remember what those acronyms mean. What is GDP, gross domestic product? Well, that is, of course, growth in our economy. What do we see happening? Well, gross domestic product rose just a pitiful 0.5% in the first quarter. Now, this is the third anemic start to a year. What does that mean? Well, the poor... Q1 growth that we've seen in the past was all explained because we had a really severe winter. But what was this last winter like? Well, it was a mild winter across the country. What does that mean? Well, I don't think it bodes all that well. We had sluggish net exports. We had weak corporate profits. Again, things are not all rosy in the U.S. and across the world. So the Federal Reserve ended up just kicking that can down the road. They made no move on interest rates. I mean, again, at 0.25%, what can they really do? I mean, if, if things don't look good, what, go negative? Anyway, they sent mixed signals on the timing of the next rate hike. Uh, they removed a reference dealing with the global and economic financial developments in the first paragraph of the statement. Some saw this as a hawkish sign, again, who really knows? The Fed ended up highlighting that labor markets have continued to improve. That's what they say. And all we mean is the people we've already taken off the rolls aren't affecting the rolls anymore. 
And again, you can cook those numbers however you want them. What we really see happening is that economic activity does look like it has slowed and slowed significantly. There's not going to be another Federal Open Market Committee meeting until June. So there's going to be a whole lot of data those policy geeks are going to be looking at in the meantime. We talked a little bit earlier about Bank of Japan. They're in action. The uh, Japanese shares in the market, their market tumbled. The yen soared when the Bank of Japan declined against additional monetary stimulus. Again, they've got lots of problems, have had lots of problems, and just cannot get their way out of the hole that they have dug for themselves. Now, Eurozone, what do we see going on there? Well, inflation continues to decline. I love that word, de decline. What that means is they have deflation taking place. So even though the Eurozone economy grew by about 1.6% over the year in the first quarter, what we see happening is that they are having deflation hit their economy. And that is putting lots of pressure on the European Central Bank to try to figure out ways to spur growth and get this, spur inflation, that hidden tax, because inflation is good. What does inflation mean? It means that if you borrowed incredible sums of money you have no hope of ever paying back, that if you can inflate, if, if inflation kicks in, you can pay back those loans with cheaper money. Again, folks, house of cards. That is why you've got to learn how to read these charts so that when things do start to crash or do start to zoom, you're able to figure out and make the right decisions for you, for your wealth, for your family, for your future. You've got to have yourself liquid so that you can make the right decisions when you actually learn how to read these charts. So please, again, you know, Talk to people, study, learn, make this stuff work. We saw uh, Saudi Arabia is unveiling plans to lessen their reliance on oil. Uh, I don't know what else they're going to be able to sell, but sand, I find that fascinating. Uh, the UK, they're talking about their growth is steady and the Brexit uh, can prompt near-term dips in GDP. Uh, again, that's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out in Europe with them getting out of the, when I was in school, it was called the common market, the European Union at this point. Going to be hard to do, but who knows? The Brits may do it. They've surprised the world in the past. And what do we see going on as we jump into the next week? Well, several things happening. On Monday, you're going to see the manufacturing purchasing managers indices are going to be released globally. It's going to happen on Monday. It'll be interesting to see what that's going to show us. Again, it's not like a Fed meeting or anything. If news is particularly bad or particularly good, that could have an impact. But again, not holding my breath. On Wednesday, a couple of things happen. The Eurozone retail sales are going to be reported on Wednesday. And also service sector PMI, purchasing managers uh, indices, are going to be released globally on the 4th of May. And then at the end of the week, U.S. Unemploy or employment data is going to be released. So again, particularly good, particularly bad could have an impact on the market, but not holding our breath, nothing like the Fed meeting that took place over the last week. So my friends, pay attention to what's going on on these weekly charts, on the daily charts, on the two-day charts, and on the four-hour charts. Now, what do you need to do throughout the course of the week? Well, on Mondays or on the weekends, you're digesting what's been going on on these big charts, listening to what affected the market this last week, what news may affect the market in the coming week. Have an idea in the back of your heads what's really going on. Remember, the big indexes are moving toward crossing over, going down, whereas gold is moving toward, is, is in a confirmed uptrend and is just kinked back in the direction of up moves with this massive movement on Friday as gold has sort of reversed what looked like was going to be a downtrend in it as the rest of the market crashed. Keep that in mind as you listen every day to our 10 minute or so podcast. We talk about what's been going on that day. We love it when all three of our time periods and our MACDs in those time periods run in the same direction. That's the most powerful time 
to trade and to look for things to go your way. Remember to have fun with those inverse indexes as the market starts to go down. You don't just have to get out of the market in your virtual trades. You can go over to SH. That is an inverse fund for the S&P 500. QID is one of the several different inverse funds for the NASDAQ 100. And of course, gold's going up. That's not an inverse. You can buy GLD in your virtual trading. And again, pay attention. We'll be with you every day talking this out. Thank you so much. We'd love to hear from you. Write us, uh, email us, go to chartingwealth.com, sign up for our daily email where we'll send you the video replay of our charting review plus the weekly review and forecast. We thank you so much. Appreciate you being with us every day at Charting Wealth.